But if we look at how, where greenhouse gases come from, most of the time we talk about energy production and transportation and buildings and a variety of things along those lines. And yet if you add up livestock and agriculture and a little bit of the transportation that relates to that, you're talking about a, roughly a third of current greenhouse gas production that is associated with food production. One of the things that's important on the fishery side is that, unlike on land, the differences in greenhouse gas production is not associated with the species you produce, it's how you catch it. That's the dominant factor in terms of greenhouse gas production. And from these bars, you can see that, on average, there are, there's a lot of variability between different forms of catching things. But even if we look at the average values, they tend to be dramatically lower than the average values for land-based production. And if you look at best practices, in some of these it's, you probably can't even tell there's a blue bar there. Best practices is often an order of magnitude or more lower greenhouse gas production than any possible form of animal meat production on land. Now, in the context, as I said before, for wild fisheries, the greenhouse gas implications for wild fisheries are associated with how you catch them. A similar pattern is true in aquaculture, that there's really two factors now um, that have influenced the major levels of greenhouse gas production. One is how you raise the fish, and the other is whether you have to feed it or not. Those two things play an enormous role because of the impact in terms of feed. But just like in the wild-caught fisheries, although there are forms of aquacultural production that have relatively high levels of greenhouse gas production, such as self-contained recirculating systems on land, um, there are others that are exceedingly low relative to even the best possible practices on land. Looking forward in terms of this production, the environmental impacts associated with seafood production of either form, wild-caught or aquaculture, utilizing best practices, are dramatically better than any of the options on land. And in some cases, they're dramatically better than even a switch to an entirely vegetarian diet. But I think the real message on this is the change that we project in the next 30 years is enormous in terms of food production. And anything that shifts more of that production to the most sustainable practices with seafood production are going to have positive environmental benefits for the planet. Thank you.